reports after reports are coming into the public domain which are showing the poorly performing indicators all across the sector, be it automobile or be it a manufacturing industry. So to talk more about it and to know how grave and how, what is the scale of the economic crisis that we are reeling under. To talk more about it, we are having with me Nirupama Sundarajan. She is a senior fellow and a head of research at Pahle India Foundation. So thanks Nirupama, thanks for joining us. Firstly, I would like to start off with a very important question. The report that has come out from Pahle India Foundation, from, from, of that report you are a co-author. And that uh, report talks about sector specific approach for improving ease of doing business. So can you throw light on that report? What are the premise of that report? What are the methodologies you adopted? So when Pele India Foundation first began to work on ease of doing business, we began like most other uh, frameworks which was looking at it state wise. However, we found when we analyzed uh, basic back of the envelope kind of calculations, we looked at data of GSDP and uh, improvements in ranking, we found there was actually no impact of the improvement in rankings for state on their respective GSDPs. So we began to wonder why that was the case because at the end of the day an improvement in ranking is supposed to attract more investments and create opportunities for employment and growth. We realized that this is probably because of two reasons. One, there is usually a lag between a time of a report, uh, uh, an implementation of a reform and the impact. But second, more importantly, we believe that because the recommendations are more at a um, macro level in terms of what states had to do, they may not have the desired impact on a sector per se. So for example, even for states that have been traditionally at the top of the ranking, it is not that all sectors contribute equally or that all sectors have no problems at all in functioning. So we believe that if you take a sectoral approach to ease of doing business, then states will have the right to choose which sectors really matter to them and look at each of it separately and focus on easing doing business for those sectors. We also believe that it will not be sufficient to just look at single sectors and silos, but to look at an entire value chain, which means looking at input sectors, looking at output sectors, thereby creating a framework for an economy to grow and our hypothesis therefore is that if you take a sectoral approach where states can choose the sectors they want to concentrate on depending on the potential the sector has to contribute to growth we will see more quantifiable gains for the state in terms of both um, gsdp employment creation and even investments coming in so that was the premise so you talked about the report, which are the specific sector you picked up for uh, like studying the all the things about the ease of doing? So we undertook a case study of three sectors which was sugar, alcohol, beverages and tourism. Hmm. And we picked these three sectors for uh, three reasons actually. The first is uh, it's an excellent kind of interplay of um, agricultural sector, manufacturing sector and services sector. Hmm. The second is because sugar as a commodity is centrally regulated, the alcohol beverages is completely state regulated and tourism is both centered and state, state regulated. regulated. And the third reason is because sugar acts as an input industry for the alcohol beverages and tourism acts as an output industry. So for us that kind of established a value chain not only in terms of sectors but it was also very interesting mm. for us to look at it from a regulatory point of view and also from the interplay between your traditional three sectors or three areas that are that define an economy which is agriculture services and manufacturing so what are your findings of this report so we had some very interesting findings that emerged so from a macroeconomic point of view we do believe that easing doing business will help sectoral uh, uh, growth and i think that will add to the gsdp for example in most states um, after gst and after stamp duty the alcohol sector and excise collection through that sector is the largest contributor to revenue so that sector has often been used as a way to generate extra revenue and sometimes even to fund disaster relief or to fund um, farm loan waivers by raising excise duty in a random manner for a short duration you know, of time etc. Uh, 
We also found that from an excise point of view procedures are almost all across all states they are almost all of them are um, offline. So digital India hasn't really penetrated into the excise department and in terms of process approvals or putting any of them. So they all still work on paper trails. Mm. So that was another big finding and also therefore a recommendation for us. The third we found is for the hospitality sector which is a large contributor of tourism. They seem to suffer because of a lack of any kind of vision document or for the lack of any kind of nodal department or ministry and I think they will benefit from that. For sugar we found that it's an incredibly regulated sector where everything from the kind of price at which they procure their uh, input material which is sugar cane to where they procure it from to in terms of how much sugar they are producing, how much sugar they can sell and at what price they sell, they are very very controlled, it is a highly controlled commodity and we find that because of that it has resulted in actually the sugar mills suffering the fate that they have today, these have been some of our broad findings. Moving on to the next question I would like to ask you, seeing the current economic slowdown and the scenario the country is reeling under. What's your quick talk, take on that? Like there are divergent viewpoints on this. Is this a structural slowdown? It's a cyclical one. What's your take on that? See, I think a slowdown is there. I will not use the word recession. I think that's incredibly extreme. Mm -hmm. I do definitely think there is a slowdown. Um, I think that's largely because there are no investments private or public that has happened and I think consumption has also slowed down. Consumption has slowed down because at the end of the day you see a situation where incomes are not being generated and incomes are not being generated because your uh, private sector or your public sector, your industry and your services economy has taken a beating. So therefore the trickle down has affected across the economy. I think a fiscal stimulus is necessary in terms of what you can do for consumption. I know. Uh, Finance Minister Ms. Sita Raman has been announcing multiple uh, reforms that she is hoping would target and create that you know impetus for growth to restart. Having said that, I also believe that there are some sectors that the government should probably focus more on. Through this report and through some of our earlier reports, we have been talking about tourism as a sector that can actually generate a lot of growth purely because of the amount of interlinkages that it has mm. and uh, I do believe that we are not um, you know kind of giving tourism the kind of attention that it requires. Secondly, I do not think manufacturing is going to solve all our problems especially your traditional manufacturing sectors. Therefore, we need to think a little differently. Uh, we should be focusing on construction and real estate a lot more again because of the vast interlinkages that it has. I believe if you can look at couple of these focus sectors and again connecting it back to the report and ease doing business for these sectors, you will see immediate growth opportunities and immediate employment opportunities. So the, uh, you said that Nirmala Sitaraman uh, introduced several measures mm. from bank merger to uh, rolling back of FPI surcharge. Do you think that these measures are enough to solve the crisis that the country is facing in terms of economy and, and the consumption problem or the NPS? Do you think that all the, the measures taken by her are enough to solve the problem? See, so an economy is, is something which is very large and something which is beyond repair through just a few kind of suggestions and that too for a country like India as diverse in terms of economic uh, landscape as it were and the kind of problems faced. So I will not say these are enough but I will certainly say they do contribute to the process. It is always going to be incremental, it is never a magic wand process and you will see each of them playing their part in supplementing other reforms and in complementing other reforms which collectively will lead to economic growth. So I think it would be unfair to pick up each of them um, and look at them for their own merit in what they do. I think the impact will be felt when they looked at collectively and they looked at in terms of what happens after a couple of months because as I have already mentioned there is a lag period. So each of them will do their bit by all means. Okay. And so the next question is about the NPA. We are talking about the bank merger NPA. Some government bureaucrats said that NPA, there is that the current NPA are due to the indiscriminate lending that mm. started in the time of the UPA. Mm. So do you think and do you agree with this statement? And what's your take on that? 
I do have to agree with the statement of indiscriminate lending during a particular phase. I think uh, the UPA, when the UPA government was there, you saw bull runs happening in the stock market and you had a general sense of growth that was, you know, prevalent. And I think, uh, I think industry was excited and as was the bank. So I think there was a lot of indiscriminatory lending and because the returns that one got was so high I don't think the lending was really backed by fundamental reasons which is probably why we are in the soup that we are today. Hmm.